Does your love for food ever feel like a double-edged sword? Well, today we're gonna talk about taking control back from the chocolate chip cookies, which I just ate two of, by the way, freshly baked straight from the oven into my mouth and I sat here and wanted to record this video. So if you're like me and you love food, but you're also an ambitious person and you wanna be healthy, well, you found the perfect video because I'm here to tell you that food is no longer about nutrition. I don't know if you've been living under a rock, but food has become comfort. Food is pleasure. This is what most of us do. We go out, it's not about survival anymore. You can pretty much get all kinds of food everywhere you go go and there's new shops all over the place and it's not a stress anymore for most people to look for food we all do it out of want it's no longer about need I mean you tell me how many times in this last week did you go out to eat with your friends or just to go out to eat because you had nothing else to do that's my point most of us do it multiple times a week if not more than we need to be spending on food outside and I think there are some downsides to that and I can tell you from my personal experience I used to be an Adonis God at 21 years old I was a bodybuilding champion I was shredded I was ripped I was in really really good shape and at that point in my life food was not about pleasure for that period food became only about nutrition it was fuel for a purpose and that purpose was to get as big as I possibly could get and as shredded as I possibly could get and it had nothing to do with pleasure it was not easy and at that time I definitely had to brainwash myself to be that way but you know I found myself thinking now I'm here 31 years old and I can't get myself to get anywhere like that anymore it's almost like I've gone on the complete opposite side of the spectrum but here's the thing I've known what it's like to be in incredibly good shape and eat food for nutrition and I know what it's like to eat food like a glutton like someone who just seeks pleasure out of it and can munch on it like nobody's business right so what's the problem with that right what you eat not only affects your weight but it affects your physical health right this thing is connected to the rest of the body all the other systems depend on the food that you eat to function well and if the shit that you're eating is actual shit then these other parts of your body will, will not function well plain and simple and it can dramatically affect the health of not just your organs but your brain and that can then fuck with your mood and overall mental health and that's something that I didn't really realize was going to be as big of a problem because growing up I mostly ate well I was vegetarian for most of my life and it wasn't until I was about to turn 17 18 years old is when I was really interested in like wanting to get bigger and working out and realizing that that was something that I could actually do for myself I started to eat more meat and in that time in my life my parents you know actually they still don't cook meat in the house so they're purely vegetarian so I had to always go out to eat right so it always became this thing for me it was like oh I had to go out and where am I gonna go I didn't have a lot of money I'd go get fast food you know there was a time in my life I kid you not I would go to McDonald's and after my workout at night I would get two McDoubles stacked and I would take off the bun from one of them stack the patty so I'd get four pieces of meat and I would eat that every single night I think within a month I probably put on like 25 pounds I was looking really big and a little bit bloated but also very full and muscular at the time I was working out like two hours a day by doing that depressed driving myself so much from all the good things right I wasn't actually going out to like enjoy myself all the time it was just for purpose it was just to like fuel my body and get these gains once I finished my competitive lifestyle and when I was like you know done with all that I started working like anybody else right like I went and moved far away from my family and my friends started working in the tech industry making good money but I was working all the time and I was commuting to work from work wasn't working out as much as I used to so obviously my physical health started to go down and I was going for convenience you know I could afford to eat out more and actually like really good food so I completely went and took the shit the other way you know so that's what's interesting about this story because like I'm sitting over here making this video for you guys at 31 years old feeling like I've let myself go and to be fair I allowed myself to get this way I'm not trying to play a victim in this video and like get all this sympathy I'm just sharing how I actually feel about my situation I've had this terrible skin condition now for over seven ish months you know it started with one area like on my leg then it spread to my other leg then it went to my upper thighs both of my arms armpits back like terrible like long story short I've gone to many doctors about it they don't exactly know what's going on and I've seeked alternative medicine you know and that seems to be helping to some degree but a lot of it has to do with my diet that's the root cause it has to do with the damage that I've been doing myself for years thinking that I was going to get the fuck away with it and I'm making this video because Maybe I've caught myself at a place in my life where I'm not too far gone, where it's irreversible, where I've created some sort of disease that cannot be changed. And it's kind of a wake up call for me. But I'm basically telling you that all of this is because of my own neglect. Like I caved when life got very stressful and where things were continuously not going my way, I was depressed. I was mad anxious and I developed like a coping habit with weed. And of course with that came the munchies and that's where really the food got out of hand because I had the money, 
to buy a lot of weed, to buy a lot of good food, basically, you know, living on my own in a nice place. So basically from 21, now sitting here at 31, I seem to have gone the complete opposite way in that like I don't follow a very strict diet like a bodybuilder does. I don't eat always at the same time. I don't do a good job of watching myself or even taking track of what I'm eating. I, don't, I snack, you know, I really enjoy ice cream at night. I eat shit at night. Like, you know, it's just the opposite, like sugar and carbs, like the things that bloat you that make you fat are my favorite. Like I've basically fallen into being the typical American fat ass. So I'm not proud of it, but I'm fucking gonna do something about it. But you know what? Enough is fucking enough. It's time. I'm in the best decade of my life. Like 31 through 40 is gonna be awesome. You know, for me, that includes a healthier version of me, a happier version of myself, someone who's able to play with their kid, my son, and show him a good example of what a fit, active dad is like. Something that I didn't really have growing up. All right, and this is perhaps the story that I need to tell myself over and over again to make it my mission. So just like at 21, my mission was to become an Adonis God, squash like all the haters, all the doubts and that I have about myself. I became who I set out to be and I was constantly driven by that fear of like outworking my doubt of being that fucking loser, that skinny fat kid that wouldn't accomplish things that he set his mind to. I was ready to crush that shit and I made it happen. Now, obviously at 31, I don't have the same motivation because that doesn't matter to me anymore. That was an old vision with old results that I don't necessarily care for, but what I do care for and what I have learned from that process are the fundamentals. And I think there's a way to apply this into my life now in a more sustainable way and use the things that I've learned along the way to make me better. Because look, the reality is now I don't care about being a bodybuilder. Like even having a very, very strict diet. I don't care about that. But what I do want is my health to be better so that I can be the role model for my kid. Like I've been gifted by God with this baby, right? I get to live life again and see it through his eyes. And that's a privilege. And setting him up for success is my responsibility. And that means I have to ensure that I have good habits that he can learn from. And I have to do that intentionally because obviously he's going to pick up my bullshit habits without me trying. So why don't I try to put in some good habits too? Something that's actually going to stick with him for the rest of his life and maybe set him up to be a much healthier individual much more than me. So this is something that I've been thinking a lot about. I've been getting myself excited about once again because I need the fucking fire lit. Because if I know anything about myself is that when I decide to go after something, I do whatever it takes to get there. But obviously, I'm not willing to pay certain prices that I paid at 21 now at 31 to get there because those costs are expensive and I'm a little bit wiser now. But I do know that to get there, you have to have a very, very strong, compelling vision, a very big macro vision and a lot of why behind it that motivates you to get there. And for me, this is what I'm kind of creating in this video with you guys in the present moment. I'm creating that vision for who I want to be and why and why it matters so deeply to me so that I can use that to drive myself to make better behavioral decisions because I know that this is a long-term game. I'm not here to try to like get fit in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. I've done all that. I've gotten in shape, you know, and I've gotten bad, <laughs> bad out of shape. I've done that many times, especially during COVID. Fuck, it was all up and down. I think you either became a hunk, chunk, or a monk, right? I think I became all three. I meditated a lot. I ate a lot. I definitely got in good Good shape during the beginning part of COVID and then bad shape towards the end of it. And now finally I'm starting to stabilize and I want to keep this trend. I want to keep this trend line going up in the right direction. And what that means is for me to get up every day and go after it and remind myself every time that I cave to that sugar craving, like I had the two cookies before I sat down and made this video, that carb craving that, yo, I got to wake up and get new cardio the next day and do a little longer because of the shit decision I made the night before and basically hold myself accountable and not let myself slip so much. Now, look, I'm starting to sound more like my 21 year old self, but I think I appreciate it in this context because it's not about being super extreme, but it's about being very real with yourself and realizing what is this path that I'm on going to take me to if I continue this way. Like I've had my fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to like talk shit about food because there's a lot of delicious food in this world and I'm going to continue to eat it. But I'm not going to eat it every day. I'm not going to try to fuck with myself like I've been doing for the last several years. That's gotten me to this position. I'm definitely going to look for a way to be sustainably better for the rest of my life. So that's a lot of fucking talk. Let's talk about strategy. How am I going to actually do this. Let me talk to you guys about my long-term weight management strategy here. Now, like I said, this, this isn't something like let's get ripped in 90 days bullshit. This isn't a fad, like some highly restrictive diet or anything. This actually begins with one of the core pillars that's been very common in my life recently. It's about self-awareness. I have to become more aware of my triggers, my patterns, and my food addictions, the things that I'm like unconsciously going for. So what am I going to do? And I've already started this. I'm going to start a food log, but this is very different than 
and meal tracking in those apps and beginning like super precise because that shit gets a little annoying and I'm not likely to stick to it. So I'm going to start with what I can stick to. Start a log for what I eat. No long sentences, very short, minimal words. Okay. Short phrases because that's easy to do and I'm more likely to do it. And I'm going to record how I feel before, during, or after a big meal. Do I feel shitty? Do I feel full? Do I feel like guilt? Do I still feel hungry? Or do I feel pr pretty good? And I'm going to start doing this pretty consistently. It's been about, I think, maybe two weeks since I started doing this. A couple of days I missed, but at the end of the day, I did come in and write in the entries. But the, but the whole point of doing it as you're going along the day is to create the self-awareness loop in the moment. So this is my plan. All the entries in this journal, which actually is the notes app on my phone, because that's easy and convenient. Before I used to write them in notepads, but this is convenient now. It has to be short and honest, but these have to be words that are powerful and is descriptive, single words that tell the truth, because that's much more valuable to me than like trying to like write this long explanation about what I did, why I ate two cookies, you know, on a Monday night. <laughs> now, if you're watching this and you're wondering, that sounds cool, how can I do this? Well, you can do what I just described, but I'll tell you some ways that I plan to level this up over time. You know, I want to pay more attention to what I eat, how much I eat and try to get more quantifiable data. So I guess over time, I'm going to probably go towards like a meal tracking app. But because that seems a bit more intimidating at this time in my life, I'm not going to do that. But what I will pay attention to is my compulsiveness, especially when I want to, you know, get a little too high on Friday night, you know, whatever. And then like crave pasta at like 9 p.m. and garlic bread and ice cream, you know, and like all that good stuff. It's terrible, like all at once, you know, it's kind of ridiculous that I can do something like that pretty regularly and comfortably and not even give a shit about it until I sit here and tell you guys about how bad it's actually affecting me. So here's the thing, why am I doing all this? Well, I already told you why, the vision, but here are the nuggets, right? The reason I'm doing all this and why I'm gonna track my meals a bit better and not make it a pain in the ass is because over time, as I do this, it's gonna give me insight. This is the subtle thing about self-awareness. When you start to practice it towards something, you put your attention and your energy there, you start to get intuitive of guidance and that comes from within it comes from the gut it's funny we're talking about like a fat stomach right but it does come from the gut and i'm going to start to track whatever that insight might be you know whether it's something revealing about my skin condition that hey i noticed that if i eat this then, then i noticed that my flare-up is worse you know maybe it's a couple days down the line then i know that i'm going to cut that out and see how that goes so this is i think very essential at this point in time and i'm going to use the experiences that my intuition brings me and i'm going to also write them in the same journal with short phrases so like i said my goal here is to become very aware of my eating patterns and my feelings associated with those patterns. So listen, if you made it this far into this video, I'm super pumped because I hope you're going to come along for the rest of this ride because I'm very, very excited to be reignited with my vision once again, to be better and to hopefully share it with all of you and not just share the success, but also share when I'm totally failing. Maybe you guys can learn that, hey, it's okay to fail as long as you keep trying. As long as you don't give up, you will get there because that definitely works. It's worked for me so many times in my life that I know that that works fundamentally. So why not apply it to this situation yet? again. But listen, all this good stuff that I just said, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be sitting here on a Friday night wanting pizza and getting stoned and, you know, use that to like relax like countless other times that I've done and how many other people do. I'm probably going to do that from time to time. But my vision of myself and the way I see myself and how I choose to act and play this out, I'm hoping that it's going to still bring more awareness. I'm going to, I'm going to still log when I do those bad things, because I think one tendency I had when I was using those meal tracking apps is I was more hesitant to log the times when I fucked up. So this, this time I'm taking that pressure off. So I am going to log the bad things that I do, but I'm not going to give myself too much shit for it. But doing it over time, I know it's going to raise my self-awareness because it's going to remind me over and over every time I see it, like, hey, am I moving towards that vision or am I moving further away from it? Am I becoming the dad and the man that I want to be for my son? Or am I becoming the fat piece of shit that I don't want to become? Playing that vision over and over in my head about who I don't want to be and what I don't want to become, it's fear-driven motivation. It can be unhealthy, but I'm telling you something, fear is a great motivator. If you can use the thing that you don't want and visualize that and then focus your attention on the thing you want and constantly be running away from the thing you don't want towards the thing you want, chances are you might get there because fear is a great motivator, much more than pleasure. Because pleasure is easy. You can just take a pen, puff, you're high pleasure pain gone for now but boy when you fear the consequences of something that you know is inevitable in your future if you continue this behavior i have a strong feeling that it's going to work for me this time around and listen i'm not talking about scaring myself into believing that i am going to get that way it's not about manifesting the fear itself but it's actually about putting the energy consciously towards the focus of the vision you want the thing that you're after cutting out the noise by changing the behavior that's giving you evidence to then 
know that you're moving towards your vision and to counter the negativity of being like, ah, yeah, it is 10 p.m. And I do want to eat those bags of Cheetos, but then I'm gonna have to do more cardio tomorrow morning. So fuck that. If you play it out a little further, you tend to like make better decisions. And for whatever reason, I just hadn't been doing that because I chose the easy way out. I know why. So listen, if you found this video helpful and you're ready to come along with the journey with me, let me know in the comments. And if you want to share your journey and talk in more detail, I'm always available in the DMs. You can also hop in the Discord and we can have a longer chat. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and we'll see you guys next time.